It is my privilege and joy that we can start a new study about the oneness in Christ. It was Christ's desire that he expressed at the end of his earthly life before he went to the cross. In his last recorded prayer, he says this, John 17 from verse 20. Neither pray I for thee al these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. This is a prayer of Jesus. This is his desire. And this prayer goes from his time and reaches the end time and even goes beyond of that. It is the prayer of his heart that there should come one time when there should be perfect oneness in him. I just was sitting two days ago at the meal at a family. They invited me and we were talking and I expressed my belief that one day we will be united. And we will have a clear, unshadowed uh, message, a light, like it says here, that they may be made perfect in one. And he said to me, I don't believe that, that it ever will happen. He said, yes, in heaven. No. Christ's prayer was not for, to reach the unity in Christ in heaven but here and now, so that the world may be convinced that they have a Savior, that the world can see this is the Son of God and the way He loved His Son, He loved us. And the glory that the Son had from the Father, He has given us that we might shine as He has shone on this earth. In perfect oneness with His Father, his last generation in perfect oneness with Christ. This is it. And only then the end of the prayer will come that where he is, we shall be also. So let us look to this study from a general perspective point. God created us one man, but now we are billions of individuals and we are very different and now we always speak unity in diversity so we must define what, where do we need to be united because imagine you try to be united in the place where you can be ununited where you can disagree where each one is his own individual he doesn't need to be united at that place Imagine you try to be united at that place. And imagine to say, Yo, you don't need to be united in the place where you have to be united. And so you just switch where the unity or disagreement should be. And so you're done. So we must define in what shall we be united. In appearance, in form, in size, in intelligence, in skills, in taste, in speed, in choosing a spouse, in our dress. We, have, we had uniforms in our school and um, I was raised in communism. Do we anywhere find uniforms in nature? We don't find uniforms in nature. Every single uh, home of a... a a um, grass or a leaf of a tree is different in size, in colors, in appearance. 
So, where then shall we be united? And I found this beautiful thing as a doctor, because doctors are the most challenged to know where the way is. And so, what and where should we need to be united? So let's look and get a vision of this universe. We start with what he started with God. God is the only independent being in this universe. He is not subject to any law because he exists in himself. He must not take anywhere. So for him, the fundamental law that he gave is not binding because he is outside of it. And God is unchangeable. Why is he unchangeable? Because he's independent of circumstances. The circumstances are set by the secondary laws. So God is totally independent on any law because he lives out of himself and he cannot change himself. Circumstances don't do him anything. It's very different to us. God is outside of time, of temperature, of space, of pressure, and of speed. And there might be more things, but this is that what I know right now. So, he is the creator of all things. He created the universe. And everything that came out of his mouth could not exist in itself because he made it. So it must come back to him with fruit. Nothing can exist out of itself. Everything must take in order to give. That's the fundamental law of this whole universe. And there is none exception. And then there are the secondary laws in which all is dependent on time, on temperature, on pressure, on space, and on speed. Everything that we have is dependent on these things. So let us look first to matter. We know matter that we have on earth is chemistry and we want to see what is in matter the same and what is in matter different. Where is matter united? So to say, but matter cannot be united because it has not a spiritual capacity because unity can be only in spiritual beings. So that's why in physical being in matters, we see what is the same, what is different. So all is the same in matter. Everything must take in order to give and all is dependent on time, temperature, pressure, space, and speed. But what is different? It is different that they have an outward appearance. Everything is different, even in color, in size, in form. And they react differently to temperature, pressure, speed, and have a different reaction time. And each element has its purpose and its place of action. That's different. They are not united to be, have all the same form or to react all at the same temperature or at the same pressure or to function with the same speed in the same time. It's not so. So, let's look to the plants that we have on Earth, but we take only one species. We have many species of plants. So, what is the same in plants and what is different? Plants are more than matter because they have, in addition, life. So they have more needs. And each individual has the same needs. This wheat must have all the same needs, even though it's everyone one thing of, of wheat. Everyone can only fulfill his needs by himself. Not one of here can come and say, I help you here. It's not possible. The same structure is in every individual of this species and it's they have all the same function so they are united they are the same in this place but where are they different like we had it with matter color size form temperature pressure speed so let's come to the animal world we have many species of animals now where are they the same or united because they have a spirit and that's why we speak of unity or disagreement and different and the same. So, animals have additional needs to plants since they are matter, life and spirit. 
So their life is dependent on the spirit, but they have matter and spirit and life. So they are spiritually dependent on a higher or greater spirit. They seek for themselves the place where they search for their food. They are united that they have to go, every one of them, to search for their food. But where are they different? Look to them. They're not one the same in color, size, and form. Their reaction on temperature, pressure, and speed is different. They have individual, they have their place in their species as individuals. They are different in intelligence, in abilities. They are disunited or in disagreement of where they go to eat. The one goes this place, the other goes that way. They are in disagreement of what they like as a taste or as a smell. They are in disagreement of choosing a mate. They are in disagreement. The one search shelter here, the other search is there. And the other one has this territory there and the other in another place. So they are different. They can be disagree at this place. Now we come to the human world. Humans are unique, only one species. Even though they have different sizes and colors, they have only one species. What do have humans more than animals? They also have been made out of matter and of spirit, and that gives life. So they have a spiritual dependence on a higher being, on a higher spirit. And also they seek themselves from where to eat and what to eat. The nutritions are fixed. Their needs are fixed, like for the plants and for the animals. But they are the one that go to pick and choose. But they have an addition to the animals, and that is they have morals. They were made with reason, with the capacity of introspection, to know themselves. When an animal doesn't know himself, he doesn't know even that he's a cat or a dog or a aunt, an aunt. It's, they don't know it. Humans have knowledge about themselves. That makes them fully responsible for their actions because they have morals. Now, are we different? We are different in appearance, in color, in size, in form. We have different reactions on temperature, on pressure, on speed. The one runs more, the other slower. We have our individual place in our society. We are different in abilities and in intelligence. We are different in our preferences. We disagree on what to eat. We disagree on the taste and the smell. We disagree of choosing a spouse. We disagree what we built and how we built the home. We disagree in beauty. And we mostly or should disagree in how we do things. The how to do things was given to the spirit of man, his ability to do it by himself. The methods that we use are individual. No one can impose the other one his method. That would be not right because we must disagree in method. When we do certain things, we can do them like we want. And everyone must go and search to do it better than the one before him. Now, we in medicine, we have certain, uh, we learned how to cut and how to do certain surgeries. And everyone tries, through the error that we have, to put his own method in front of the others. And when we had a change of a, of our chief in uh, during my residency, uh, the new chief said we have to do the tonsillectomy in a different way, and we should add certain things, a suture at the end for security reason and bleeding and all this. And of course, uh, we did it a long time ago without this, and now he comes with his new method and he imposes it all on all of us. And we are residents; we have to obey. But I was always a little bit different. And I said to me, it is unreasonable to change that which I know it's functioning. 
Yes, if it would not function, then we change, we prove. But to improve in the wrong way is wrong. And someone should impose the methodology on you without reason. So I did it my way, but I was always very careful. In case he would ask me why I did it my way, I would have an argument to explain why I did it and why I could not do it like he wanted it to do. And so we must have our individual way of doing things. This is our liberty that God has given to us. So, then we look to the angels' world. And the angels have just a spirit. And they also have morals and reason. That's why they all are having full responsibility for their actions. Now, they can also disagree or be different in color, size, and form because even the heavenly beings have a form. Paul says the heavenly beings has also certain forms. And we know that the cherubim and the seraphim are different because the one has so many wings and others have other wings. So that's, that's difference. They might be also dependent on, I don't know, pressure, temperature in a different way. They have their individual place in the species. They have their place in the society that God has given them. They are different in intelligences and abilities. And they are probably different in preferences. As what the one sees as more beauty and the other sees more beauty. That's different. And, of course, they are also having that liberty of how to do the things God gave them to do. When God created Adam, when he created him, he did not tell him, look, you have to do the things like this and like that. No, he just said what he had to do him, do it. And then Adam had to find it out. This is what God gave us because he endowed us with a spirit who can reason and who can find its own method of working. Now, let us conclude. The fundamental law says the creator has created all, is God. And matter, plants, animals, humans, angels, they all are creatures. They are a creation. And without difference, they are dependent on their creator. If the creator would not sustain them and put all the needs there that they, every one of them should take them in order to give it so that they have their own uh, place and their own action, then they would not exist. So God is the supplier of needs. He must uphold the whole universe, but he gave to every individual that law that it should take from the means where they are there and give it. Now, angels and humans have a plus because they have morality and ethics. And it comes from the capacity of knowing themselves, of knowing their identity. And so their identity is decisive for them. Animals don't know who they are. They cannot look to the window or to the to the mirror and say, oh, how beautiful I look. No, they have no idea about it. But we have. We can say, oh, this is, this is a white hair and we have to take it off or whatever. So, identity is that which is different, that what gives the human and the angel the capacity to know itself. So, who only can disagree with the fundamental law? Matter, plants, and animals cannot because they have no ability. They cannot disagree to become independent because there is no ability to transgress it. Now, angels and humans, God did not make them with that liberty that often is said today that they could choose evil because there was no evil in the universe. If God gave to angels and humans, the ability to choose evil, then he would be the creator of evil. 
They only had the potential ability to, to progress the fundamental law, to think that they might be someone that they cannot be. But he gave them that which would prevent them from it. That is, reason should not permit that you ever think that it is possible to become something else that you were, you, you were created, to become a creator instead of a creature. Now, I give this very simple test sometimes to my patients. I say to them, look, would you take a speed and run through this wall? I have a big uh, wall out of uh, uh, cement. It's not wood. It is uh, strong and it's, it's thick like this. And I say, Take speed and go through the wall. And I didn't have in this 15, 14 years since I am in my practice that any one of my patients whom I suggested it tried it. Why not? I hope not. no one will try it, but if someday one tries it, I have to bring him after he has the impact with that wall, I have to bring him to emergency room. Depends on how fast he... He runs. Reason must forbid the ability, must forbid that you should try something that's impossible. So let's look to Lucifer. Lucifer was dependent on God. He was the highest of the angels. His motivation was love because he lived out of God. Now, Lucifer, the leading angels, who God has given Every ability, he was the highest being. The Bible describes him having all those gifts, physical and spiritual. He started to think one day that he could go through the wall. He thought that he could change his identity from a creature into a creator. And so he started that process of thought and he was deceiving himself because there was never an experience before to live without God, to become independent of God, because that which would mean to change identity. The change of identity would be independent. You see, the wall that you cannot penetrate through it makes you dependent because you have a, a barrier. But ask God to go through the wall. Has no problems. Because for him, all things are possible. But for a created being, things are only made possible as much as it was given them by God to do. That's what, why they are creatures. And that's why they are not gods. Because we are limits. God has no limit. There is no wall that can stop God of anything. But for an angel that is a created, even if it was the first created, the highest creature in the whole universe, even if it was the highest creature, the self-deception should be clear. And God made it clear to Lucifer, look, what you want is not possible. You can try, take a speed, as long as you want. And Lucifer was convinced that that wall is not penetratable. Lucifer was convinced that it is not possible that he should go through. But in spite of that, he still tries. And this try is irrationality. This try brings in the mystery of sin. Because there is no thing that God could do for Lucifer to change his mind. Because if you cannot explain to someone by reason, or you can explain it and he still tries it, Lucifer breaks his dependency on God and says, I can live by myself. And so that in him was born unreason and irrationality, and that is to go against the law of 
dependency. I spoke recently with my youngest foster daughter and uh, she fights for now 10 years uh, to not believe in God. And it's amazing to see how she does that. And, uh, but I know that she still believes. She cannot do different because she has an experience in her, in her teenage years, in her youth with God that she cannot change. But she would. And so I talked to her and I said, look, reason will forbid you to not be saved. A reason will forbid you to think that you are spiritually independent. And if you admit that you are spiritually dependent, then you know by law, and again, you can reason this law, you can understand it, that dependency can only be from a higher being, never from a lower one or an equal one of us. Dependency can only be on a higher being. We are dependent on nature. Nature is big, much higher than us. Uh, we are dependent on the sun. The sun is much greater than us. A child is dependent on his mom. A mom is greater than a child. Our spirit, if he rec recognizes that he's dependent spiritually, immediately reason would tell us that we have a higher being where we have to take our need because we cannot take it from a lower or an equal as us. And she was surprised that I said her this because she said, I thought that reason makes me to be an unbeliever. No, friends. It's unreason and irrationality that makes people people to run through the, through the wall that makes them to think they are someone they are not, to think that they can do something they are totally incapable to do. It's unreason. That's why the Bible says it's the, the foolish man says in his heart, there is no God. It's not the wise man. It never was. A wise man cannot do that. Wisdom and reason will forbid to think or to try to be someone else than we can be. So it's not explainable why Lucifer did what he did, but God could not stop him. It was not God's fault that he did not create reason well or the mind of, of Lucifer correctly. This mind of Lucifer did not even want the evil. It wanted the good. By, It was just confused between dependency and liberty. And still people are confused on that. And he confused the whole angels about what is liberty and dependency. And he said, if you are dependent, you cannot be free. And we are made to be free. And so he was in confusion. But when you are in confusion and you just prepare yourself to run through the wall and someone tells you, look, there is no way to go through. And you go, you see the wall, you, you, you put on it and you see it's impossible. And you still try. That's unreason. And that is sin. That's the mystery of sin. That's why it cannot be explained. It cannot start with God. It was born in the devil. Not because God didn't create him perfect, but because he could use his abilities to try something that reason should have forbidden him to do. So, that's why he changed his motivation. And now Lucifer is not a loving person. He loves Selfishness and pride, he loves only himself. He tries, he became dependent on his angels and is now dependent on the earth and 
on the, on the humans and he wants to keep them for himself. Let's see where the origin of this unity comes on earth. It was the same process. Adam and Eve were created. God took out Eve of Adam. They were one life, two individuals from one life. And they were both connected to God and their motivation was love. All they did came out of love. All they did came out of their identity. I am a creature of God. So they were tempted. They were tempted to think that they could change their identity from a creature into creator. They were tempted to walk through the wall. Now this wall is not physical, it's spiritual. So that's why you might be tempted. If they would have seen the wall as physical, they might have probably never went through. But they have no excuse because God told them and said, look, the day you try to go through the wall, you pitch on the wall, and the moment you hit it, you die. And so Adam and Eve were not in a process of deception like it was with Lucifer. And God de dealt with him and tried him. And, and it was a time until he came to the point. He said, I know I cannot go through, but I still try. It was not so with the humans. Adam and Eve knew that trying it would cost them everything. And they knew it from the beginning. And Eve were not less capable. Yes, there would have been advantage if they would have uh, met the tempter together. But there is no excuse that Eve was alone. That she fell into temptation. There was no ex it's no excuse. Because a, a woman has the same ability to think like a man. It has also the same uh, function of its subconscious thinking in humans and in I mean thinking in, in men and in women are identical. I didn't find it different. It's it's clear if the woman was made out of the man, she must think the same way in functioning. They have a little bit different uh, additional needs which are not basic needs. And they are different. And they disagree with men in things which are not needed to be united. But they have the full capacity to decide and to think for themselves. So there is no thing to say, ah, the woman was not smart enough. No. She had the same ability like Adam. And there's no excuse for her. And there's no excuse that Adam believed his wife. That he said to her when she came and said, Adam, I went through the wall. I ate from this. And look, I'm now living in the highest sphere. Adam, if you eat, your mind will enlarge. It's like when my son came to me once, the foster son, and said, when you, when you smoke cannabis, your mind enlarges. I say, oh, this is an interesting thing. Your mind enlarges when you get irrational. They entered into the self-deception to think that they are gods. And now we all are born with these glasses, with the idea that we are gods. We are all born unreasonable and irrational because we think we are gods. Adam and Eve took unreason and irrationality over from the devil. I'm so happy that disease and all problems that humans have come from unreason. And they come from unreason because they have separated themselves from the source of reason, from the source of wisdom, from the source where you can take that, what strengthens your mind to know your abilities, to know your limits. And they were changed in their motivation, in selfishness and pride. The only place where this unity can be is in this unity with your maker. In this unity with God. Everyone who would be united with God, that is, he takes from God, he trusts God, will be united, not with those who are not taking from God, but he will be united 
with everyone that takes from God. So we now were born in separation of God and Jesus comes to this earth. God comes through Christ to unite humanity again with divinity and to make us again one with him. This is the only place where we must be united. And if in this place we are united, everything else will work out fine. There will be a preacher in Australia, one in Africa, one in Europe, one in America, wherever they will be. They will have the oneness in the message. They will have the oneness in the foundation on the law that is the fundamental law. The methods will be different. The one in America uses that kind of agreement, that language, that picture, that that symbol, whatever they use, it doesn't matter. The way they do it is their own method that they can do because God gave them that ability and that freedom. But in their message, in the light of the definitions, in the semantics, they will be the same. They will be united in Christ. That's why I believe that this will happen in our generation. This prayer, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. We can only be made perfect in Christ because he became us. And if we go by faith to become one with him, and then the world may know that thou hast, thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. We must show this world the full love of God. They must be convinced that God is love and God is reason and God only is the one that is independent and we are all dependent on him. And this dependency doesn't make us something Unreasonable. They, that, this dependency makes us wise, makes us happy, makes us able to fulfill all our needs and expand our mind in all ages, growing in knowledge, growing in wisdom, in understanding, and having the pleasure of extension and extension, never ending in gaining that what God has prepared for us. But it will be always in the limits of dependency. That's why our identity is the one that is decisive. So I'm looking forward into this study that we will learn what is the oneness in Christ. And we might, at the end of this study, will be a step more close to be that united people that show that love of God no matter from which part of the world and in our generation, in our time, in this days, it must happen that the prayer of Jesus finds its fulfillment. May God grant us the, this experience to be part of this movement of this generation that will be perfect one in Christ. Amen.